beautiful and welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video where we are going to give the worst products of 2020 one more chance. I am going to do almost the full face of the worst products of 2020 and we are going to see if maybe I changed my mind on some of them. But I don't think I will though, spoiler alert, I have been reviewing and trying these quite a lot so I don't think I will change my mind but who knows, I will try maybe some different techniques, maybe some different things. We're just going to give it one more chance but... I'm not having high hopes, not gonna lie. And if you haven't been here before, my name is Angie. Hello, I am a lover of fashion and makeup, especially colorful makeup and colorful fashion. I'm trying to be a bit colorful today in my fashion. I do think my look's gonna be colorful too, but I'm just trying to wear something pretty in case this turns out to be a total train wreck. But if you wanna see some more color on your timeline, if you wanna see some more experimentation and some more maybe failed looks like this one, don't forget to subscribe. This is my last video of Vlogmas. I will go back to my normal uploading schedule, which is still several videos a week. And yes, I did do somewhat space buns today because the thought of me washing my hair and styling it to apply makeup that I hate wasn't appealing to me. I just, I didn't want to have it. And if you have a problem with that, please see the manager. This video is in collaboration with my friend Karen Harris. I love Karen, I've known her for several years. I've met her in real life. She's just a sweetheart. She really has the heart in the right place. She's just so kind and so supportive, not only to small creators, but also to big creators. She loves makeup, so if you wanna see some more makeup, definitely that is the place to be. And Karen also being from Sri Lanka has a more tan skin tone, so if you wanna see how things look on a more tan skin tone, that is definitely the place to be. She also did a full face of makeup that was failed for her from this year and I do know that one of the things here we actually have the same so I'm not sure if I'm gonna be using that in this video um, but we'll, we'll see but don't forget to check out Karen she is such a sweetheart I will leave her video and a link to her channel down below I think I'm gonna zoom in so that we can try I do have one two three four five six <clears throat> eyeshadow palettes here in front of me and I think I had even more. If you want to see, by the way, if you want to see the full list of the worst makeup of 2020, the worst makeup that I tried that was released in 2020, I will leave a link to that video down below because the things that I'm going to be using today, unfortunately, isn't all of it. I'm just going to be using some of it. But let's zoom in and we can dig into some of these things. And like I said, if you want to see the whole list of all the things that I thought was a fail this year, Link is in the description box. Okay, I I was gonna say this is gonna be exciting. Is it really gonna be exciting? But yeah, well, buckle up for the express train to a failed look. Choo choo! I don't know how to feel about this. I don't have any self tanner on right now because the like one of the biggest problem with this. This is I didn't like anything from the XX Revolution line. Uh, I like the highlighter, the the powder highlighter that was nice. This is the glowy foundation in shade fx6 problem with this one main pro like first of all this isn't amazing like it holds up on me but not amazingly good but the main problem with this is that they have so many shades but how they describe the shades is in a way that you just don't know what you're getting this shade fx6 is described as a light to medium and right now i am a light i do not have any self tanner on I am a light. This is a light to medium with a neutral undertone, which is what I have. I am a light to a light medium with a neutral to a warm undertone, depending on how much tan I get. When I get like my summer tan, I do get more like a medium with a yellow undertone, but this is meant to be my shade. And let me tell you, this is not, first of all, this is not a light medium shade. This is like lighter than what I have on right now. And this is also very peachy. According to me, this is very peachy. So look at how pale this makes me. So I am gonna, I cannot believe that this is marketed as a light to medium. When this is like too... It also smells. Like... That like cheap hand soap that you get when you stay at a really inexpensive hotel. Look at how light this is. How is this light medium? How? 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 This is also very thick. And like I said, this is not holding up the best on me. Look, look at this shade. How is this a light medium? When it's lighter 
than my skin when I don't have self-tanner on and I'm a light. How? Look at this, I'm a ghost. How? 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 Look at my hand. Look at my hand. If you do not know how to describe shades, don't. Don't. Don't describe shades, just, just, just don't. And literally look like I have been applying like kids SPF in my face. And it doesn't really look that good either. It's not even covering the redness I have here. It's so thick, it doesn't really want to settle in around my nose, which I usually don't have a lot of problem with because I don't have like deep, like deep, what do you say, deep set. I don't know what you call it. Like, I do not have those like, my nose is not hard to cover foundation. <laughs> but this is just an awful shade on me awful shade and it's not looking glowy it is lo looking weird and textured on my face i don't like this foundation i don't think it's good i don't think the shade range is good i think this is a bad foundation the end look at see this is why i didn't want to style my hair now we're gonna go in to the cream bronzer from salt new york this is one of those products that sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't I wonder which of them it's going to be today. Isn't that going to be amazing to find out? I'm excited too. I'm going to use this brush. This is the brush I use for almost all cream products. This is an amazing brush for cream products. This is the Real Techniques Contour Brush. Amazing, amazing like brush for cream products. So I just, this is what I would do with any cream product. But this is so stiff. But let's see if I can work some in the brush. And I'm gonna really, really try. This is obviously not gonna match now because the foundation made me like three shades lighter. But sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't. Let's see which day we are in today. Yeah, it is, I don't know if you can see, it is turning a little bit patchy here. I just, I don't like products that it's like, oh no, you have to use it this exact way. Reading a poem towards the full moon while standing on one leg and drinking a glass of water upside down. Don't wanna have products like that. If I'm gonna do products like that, they better give me a result that I can't get with any other product. This isn't that. I like the result I get with my milk, uh, milk makeup bronzer stick more. But maybe if you don't like the milk makeup bronzer stick, maybe you would like something like this. I have several friends and people that I follow on YouTube that love this product. I'm just not one of them. And I think sometimes it's like helpful to see that not every creator loves the same things because we all have different makeup preferences. I'm just gonna try and warm this up a bit so I don't look as Morticia Adams. It is not the best blended. It's better on this cheek when it is on this cheek because I have a spot here that's like bare. And yeah, I bet there are better ways to work with this product. And I mean, I didn't even like this foundation, so it could be that, but I will say I have tried this product with several different things and I just, I just haven't liked it. The thing I like the least though is this blush. This is a balmy blush. First of all, it's like a sealed layer now. And now I break to the layer, it becomes a little bumpy, and there's a balm. This balm has never looked good on me, and I don't expect it to do today either. This balm breaks up whatever foundation I put it on top of. Whatever foundation I use, it breaks it up. I don't like the consistency of it. I think it's too balmy and oily, and it just doesn't jive with how I do my makeup. I tried to go in with very little, but yeah, it's still doesn't look perfect but this is definitely good enough I'm not gonna go in with too much I usually prefer when blushes are a little more seen than this but since I had a lighter foundation I it does show today this is a finicky product it's a bit too oily for my liking and it does break up whatever foundation I like to use it with I also think it is a little hard to work with and I haven't been able to crack the coat so for me this is a no-go. But if you love it, or if maybe you don't have the same makeup aesthetics as me, maybe maybe this could be for you. It's not for me, though. I love the palette, though. That is amazing. That is so beautiful. Let's 
we're on the makeup revolution train here. This is the sculpting bronzer from Revolution Pro with cocoa extract. Who cares about that? I'm not baking, okay? <laughs> baking. I'm not actual baking, like I'm not baking on my face either. This is in Balao. This turned very, very patchy on me. So I'm gonna use a very flimsy brush so I can get, uh, this is the Flare. A flare blush brush. Oh, this is way too big to use as a blush brush for me. But I'm gonna take this is pigmented, and I thought it was patchy, and it's also so orange that the shade would have been better as a blush. Maybe I'll put it up on my cheeks here as well, so we can. But it's I love a warm bronzer because like I said when I get a bit of tan my skin color or skin tone does tend to lean a bit more yellowish but this is just so warm that it's more like a terracotta blush than a bronzer but if you have a very orange skin tone if you are like a medium skin tone with a very orange undertone maybe but I also didn't really like the formula because I felt like it got a bit patchy like here uh, okay, okay, okay. Am I pretty yet? I'm just trying to fix to the best of my ability the color of this foundation, but I don't think it's salvageable. Okay, I did some brows with products I actually like. I also used the Urban Decay Primer Potion, which is not my favorite eye primer. And I've been saying like, oh, I'm gonna throw this out that I never do, but Maybe it's actually time. I don't like that primer. It's thick, it's texturized, it's too sticky. Uh, it does not give you an effortless blend. I'm not the biggest fan. I'm gonna be using the Sephora 3D Glow uh, Luminizer Face, Eyes and Lips. Oh, face, eyes and lips. I thought that this was a body highlighter, first and foremost. This is this is a jelly highlighter without the highlighting particles. That's what this is. There is not enough highlighter particles in this. It is just a sparse glitter that just doesn't give enough. There's like not enough. And here's the same thing. Like if I'm gonna use a jelly highlight over a powder highlight, I want it to be something special but this doesn't look that exceptional on the skin you might as well just use an eyeshadow to be honest it's it's just too little glow in this product it's just pink glitter specks i will show you a close-up of my face in the end so you can see that this is just small pink glitter specks and it's just not very impressive i can't believe how trash this foundation looks on my nose. Let's see if a highlighter can distract. I mean, from afar, sure, but there's nothing exceptional with this. And I think the glitter particles are way too big and way too far apart. And I will say, I think part of this glow here is that it's not dry down yet. So we'll see in a bit. I just didn't think that this was worth it in any way, shape or form. I didn't think that this was exceptional. I think the glitter particles in this are too big. And yeah, I've just seen, I've seen better products. Let's put lipstick on. This is the Smashbox uh, Always On Creamed Matte Lipstick in Here For It. This is a horrible formula. I mean, everything about this looks so luxe, like the component and this like curve and the color is beautiful. It just wears horribly. So I'll put it on now and we'll see how it looks towards the end of the video because from what I remember, this doesn't look that good. Mm, now I remember, it feels like a film on your lips. It feels like you have a film on your lips. And it looks good now. It looks quite okay, but we'll see in a bit. Because from what I remember, this wears horribly. We'll see. It doesn't look that horrible on my skin from afar. So maybe this is like, if you want this light glow... I will say though, I can feel it. It's like a film as well. Like I can, I can feel it on my skin. It's like I, it's like it dried down to a film. I've never been able to feel a highlighter on my skin. It's weird. And 
there are very big glitter particles. Okay, I had quite a lot of eyeshadow palettes that I mentioned as the worst eyeshadow palettes of 2020. Like I said, video down below if you want to see more thoughts on that. Let's just use some of the worst. One of the worst was definitely this Morphe Color Me Cool. Yeah, that's how I feel about this. This was atrocious. But maybe... <laughs> Probably not. Maybe if I, listen, I am gonna do my best. I, I know that sometimes I have to work extra hard with eyeshadows. This is another one that I really despise, the 420. I think I'm gonna start with this one, Shotgun. I know that sometimes you have to work extra with eyeshadows to make them work. You have to like jump through burning hoops to make shit work and you shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to work that hard. This 420 was one of those palettes that just one shadow looked amazing, but then as soon as you try to build another matte on top, it just turned patchy, muddy, impossible. But I'm gonna use very little, and I'm not gonna try and, and like make a mess out of this. I'm gonna try to do something. Why do I feel this highlighter? Mm. But at least do something that's like passable, like okay. <laughs> <laughs> something that I can live with. Okay, didn't put that much, didn't use as much as I usually do. Useless. <laughs> I'm trying here. Now we are gonna pick this one, the green here. This palette was a train wreck, like it didn't want to blend. The shadows just formed edges where I tried to blend them. Let's see if I just put very little. So just take very little and just... Ooh, they're not jiving 100%, but this could work, this could work. Okay, okay, maybe. Okay, that's not horrible, that's not horrible, that's not horrible. Maybe that's how, if you did end up buying this Morphe palette, I will say they did not jive with each other at all. So maybe using them together with eyeshadows, other eyeshadows could be the best. And that's how I felt about this melt palette as well. I mean, it's not super, super pigmented and it's a bit patchy out here, but this is okay. Not how I really want to do my eyeshadows because I want to do it as pigmented as possible. But if that's not possible with these two formulas, then I guess we're doing this. But that's, that's, that's good enough. There is some problems here but let's <laughs> let's ignore that shall we why why is it why is there two spots here it could also be this primer because honestly i mean the combo of these three things that i don't love it's not the best combo now is it i also wasn't that impressed with the wired palette but the thing that i did like with this palette was this green shade did like the green shade the green shade is very nice. I like it. So we're gonna use it today. But the other shades, not so much. And I mean, that's that's the big problem, right? There's a big palette and there's only like, oh, I think I like the white one as well. Not totally mistaken. But liking one, two, even maybe three shades out of a 10 pen palette, I mean, that's not enough now, is it? So I'm gonna use this green. It's not a metallic, it's more of a satin. Ah, oh, now I got it in my eye. Uh, it's a bit powdery, but I'll live, but I'm gonna use this under my eyes. Maybe I should spray it. I think that's what I did the first time. Let me spray it. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Another palette that I mentioned as not being one of the best palettes in 2020. My dog is here. Is this Juicy Boost. First of all, I don't think that this is a really good, like, matte, colorful eyeshadow formula. There are so many good matte, colorful eyeshadow formulas on the market. And this is a very expensive one. And they used to be better than this. So I really hope that in 2021, they will go back to being that amazing formula again. I am going to try and deepen it up with this Kale Yeah. Uh, oh, I just dug my nail into the turmeric shot. That's not ideal. And I'm going to use one of my favorite brushes. This is the Refer 14. So I'm definitely... Oh my God kick up. Definitely giving this the best chance that it could. I definitely felt like with all of these shadows, the main problem was that they didn't want to build on themselves. And I have noticed with some formulas like that, the best thing you can do is just use them with other eyeshadow palette formulas. That 
that's not bad. That's not, that's not bad. I think the main thing when things are coming in like the worst products of a year is that you didn't enjoy working with them or you have a past experience with a brand that is so much better than this or it doesn't fit your makeup aesthetics. And I don't like this like, I don't like this way of working with makeup when it's like, oh, going in little by little, oh, I'm so careful, oh my god, I'm putting on the little and then I'm blending, like, that's not my makeup aesthetic. I want things to be fun and vibrant and not effortless, but I don't want to have to literally jump through burning hoops to get my makeup to work. But I mean, that looks okay, the whole, like, you see, it's still, let's see if I can get it to stick here, that whole, like, Morphe shadow disappeared, but maybe that's not the biggest loss today. I'm gonna go back to the 420 and this like shotgun, the one I used first, and I'm just gonna see if it's possible to blend these out. <laughs> I just like packing my brush with shadow, going in, seeing how pigmented I can get it. This blend is not 100%, but hey, I'm making this work. Just taking me a bit extra time. This is okay, especially when I'm a bit from afar and it's a bit blurry. Uh, the blend isn't perfect, but I took my time. I think that this looks okay. Here's another palette that I thought was mediocre. This is the <laughs> Khaki Collin. That's what she looks like. I know people hate when YouTubers call makeup products she. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Let me use a bit of this green one on my lid. I do remember that these are a bit powdery, so I am gonna have to spray it a little bit to make this work. And I think I'm gonna use an inner corner highlight from another palette. Because I have one more palette here to show. How come the prettiest look I've done with all of these palettes is when I use them all together? I think the main thing though is that I am going into this video knowing what I'm knowing. Knowing that this is finicky formulas that require a little extra love. I will say though that I had no problems really with the shimmers in these palettes. They're like shimmers, not metallics. So the same with this like green here. It's a more of a satin, not a metallic, but I didn't have any problem with that. So maybe I am Maybe I'm cheating by using a shade that I actually liked in the palette, but sue me. But yeah, going into palettes that you know you don't really like and you know have a bit of more finicky formula usually gives you better result than the first time you use them when you were like thinking that this was gonna be all fine and dandy because then you have an opportunity Oh, stupid phone. Then you have an opportunity to use it a bit more cautiously, which is what I'm doing today. I'm using it a bit more cautiously. I'm putting in a bit more of the kale, yeah, just to meet up here. Oh, it's a little bit patchy, but again, my looks are never perfect. That's definitely good enough. Okay, let's finally use. Let me get a pencil brush. Let's finally use. A shade from the uh, Naked. Like this palette is, it, this palette is also so mediocre. If you want to hear exactly why I didn't like any of these things, again, the video down below, but this palette is mediocre. Not only do I think the color scheme is mediocre, I think the quality of the shadows are mediocre. I'm gonna use Lucid. Lucid was definitely okay, especially if you spray it a bit. Uh, this is a like mint mint iridescent duochrome and I thought that that could tie together a bit with the lower lash line that's a bit more of a cool tone green. I'm hoping. Again maybe I'm cheating because I'm using one of the shades in the palette that I actually thought was pretty okay but <laughs> it is what it is. This one I didn't dislike this uh, shadow. I thought that it was a fun pop to have a mint shadow in this palette. Is it as iridescent as some indie shadows I have? No, but it's to exp be expected in the mainstream palette, I think. Still think that this was a fun pop in this palette, and I do hope that Urban Decay will do more unexpected pops like this in the future. It's just the other shades I weren't like 100% convinced with. I mean, this isn't horrible. It is a bit patchy out here in the outer part. There is some stripes here and here that I wasn't able to blend out because I feel like, especially this uh, Juicy Boost shadow, they're a bit like 
almost like baking powder in the consistency, a bit tuggy almost, but I mean, I still think that this look is quite okay. Definitely not the worst one I've done and definitely the best look I've done with any of these palettes, but it is with me going into this knowing what I know. This is the Beauty Bay Pastel Eyeliners. Didn't really love these either. First of all, there's nothing telling what shade it is on the outside. And they're very like pointy and a bit scratchy. Here is the yellow one. I'm gonna use that in my waterline. These are not super pigmented and they're also a bit scratchy. So I'm gonna, oh, really go in there and see how pigmented I can make it. Come on. Oh, I wish that they, like you can build it up and this is nice. I just wish that they weren't this scratchy pokey. Maybe it would be better though when you like wear it down a bit. Maybe I will keep this in my collection and give it a shot. I like the yellow tone a lot better than I like the other two. I have a peach and a pink. They are just not true pastels to me. They are a bit like, like grungy pastels. So it just looks like dirty skin when I get them on board line. And it's not really the look I'm going for. This one, it was okay. Although, <sighs> I do feel like I want to cry. But here is, I think, the last product that I am going to be using. I did have some more, like I said, fails. Can't believe I feel this highlighter still. That's so weird. This is the Duff Lashes Supreme Lash. This, according to me, doesn't do anything for your lash except make them black. Uh, so, well, you can see with my lower, I have very impressive lower lashes. So don't look at my, <laughs> don't look at my lower lashes. They're impressive, whatever I do. Okay, this is the mascara on my top lashes. I basically have longer lower lashes than I have top lashes. I just didn't think that this mascara did anything for my lashes. It just didn't grip onto them and they don't curl them. They don't thicken them. They don't make them look longer. It's basically like just thin black paint that coats the, whatever little lash I have. And I think that if you are getting a mascara, you should definitely expect it to do at least something for your lashes other than just making them black. Because if all it can do is make your lashes black, then maybe you can just, I don't know, use black eyeliner and save yourself the cost of an extra makeup product. Well, this isn't that impressive now, is it? Let me see if I can, let me see if I can put the autofocus on and lower the lighting a little bit and you can see it a bit like up close like this looks pretty okay it's a little patchy here but not that bad same here it's a little patchy here but it's it's not that bad it's not that bad the lips though mm, it's just uh, not a good look and it feels so thick on the lips it feels like a film like a dry film and the highlighter. I don't know if you can see now. Let's see if I can, wrong way, turn this off. Do you see the glitter particles? I don't know. And maybe you can see now as well how the foundation is looking. Maybe you can see on my nose how it's not looking that flattering. I honestly, I don't know. Doing the best I can here, but let me tell you, Ooh, let me tell you. Wait, can I zoom out even more and we can do like a final chit chat? One sec. Okay, let me tell you, this looks okay. This is a bit like a Monet. If I'm from afar, it's like, it's not that bad. Like I can live with it, but the lips, they don't look good. And I also know, uh, I know from experience that give this even an, uh, another hour, it's gonna look so bad on the lips. You can't even touch it up. You're gonna have to remove it and put more on. And I, there are so many good long lasting formulas. This isn't one of them. The highlighter, it doesn't look as horrible on when I apply just a little and you see it from afar, but up close, it's so lackluster. And also it, I feel it, it's like it dried down to a film. The foundation, it's not my shade. I did manage to fix it a bit with the bronzer and stuff. I will say this is the best that this bronzer has looked. Uh, this salt one, this is the best I think it's look. The, the, the bronzer is too orange, like everyone can see that. I think I'm gonna hold on to this and the eyeliners uh, from 
Beauty Bay and give them another shot because I feel like those were the two items that surprised me the most in this video. The palettes I am holding on to for a bit more. I have decluttered them from my collection, but I am gonna do a full like, I'm gonna do video ranking every palette that I reviewed in 2020, which is gonna be a long video. That is coming in the beginning of the next year, mm, like not 1st January, but I, I'm, <laughs> I'm starting to prepare it in the beginning of next year and I hope you're interested in seeing that as well because it's gonna be epic and some of these, of course, worst palettes are gonna be in the bottom. <laughs> But I will say, this is probably the best look I've done with these palettes and it only shows that if you don't love something the first try, if you change up your techniques, if you use it in a different way, it might still make it work for you, but it might not be as enjoyable and as fun as your other makeup where you don't have to jump through burning hoops to make it work. And that is why I am decluttering most of this makeup because, yeah, sure, I can make it work, like, I, I can, I'll wear this, like, I'm fine. But it's not as pretty as my other makeup. It's not as effortless as my other makeup and it's not as fun as my other makeup. The quality just isn't there for what I prefer. Don't forget to check out Karen down below. I will leave a link in my description box. Thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for supporting me during Vlogmas. I don't know exactly when my next video is gonna be. It actually might be tomorrow because that's how it is sometimes on my channel. But just know that this is officially the end of Vlogmas. I will have the winner of my uh, Vlogmas giveaway. That will be announced in the video where I had the giveaway announcement. As soon as I've gotten hold of the winners, there is gonna be an announcement in that video, like in the description box and in the pinned comments. And my dog is awake. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you very soon. Bye!